We are here in the magnificent Grich Castle in the hillsides of Abigeli. Great one listed buildings, grounds and triple SI region and woodlands. Thanks to Dr. Mark Baker for his hard work and dedication appreciation to the guest speakers and massive support and encouragement to all the amazing Greer Castle team. This remarkable community project, Hope, Remembrance and Respect, the vision of Bev Baker, founder trustee from a wish to create this project following the destruction and vandalism of Greer Castle in recent years. She set out this project 20 years or more ago and here it is. Thanks to the support of Beryl and the Cascade team, Bev organises regular town meetups centrally in Abigeli Town, and there is now a following of over 800 members, plus schools now involved in this year's Hope, Remembrance and Respect project from Greer Castle. Learning about the past and learning about local history too, with the Greer Castle exhibition. A future development will be learning experience about Operation Kinder Transport in the UK. The huge importance of Greer Castle housing Kinder Transport children is an inspirational story. Poppy displays are still being created this year and will be back with Abigail TV and a visual update in the coming months. Many friendships have been forged for life with the local people working together in this project with the Greer Castle Poppy Cascade team. Beryl Walton, our marvellous team coordinator and assemblers, was seen on BBC One Festival of Remembrance in London at the Royal Albert Hall, a marvellous testament to the hard work and dedication of every poppy maker and assemblers of the Cascade. We all say it's made a vast difference to life and friendships formed through a fabulous project fuelled by passion and enthusiasm. Going forward, our work continues with younger people and we thank each and every one for your dedication and support. Thanks to absolutely everyone in every respect and to our friends who run the Pennebont pub in town, Keith and the beautiful Julie O'Keefe. During the 90s, it was vandalised and assets stripped to what seems to be beyond repair and with an uncertain future. The decay at Rich caught the eye of an 11-year-old boy who had a vision, a love and admiration for the castle since he was a small child. He brought the plight of Rich to the attention of the Prime Minister and Prince Charles and fought tirelessly for the cause as he was appalled by the destruction of Rich and wanted to restore the castle. And this was Mark Baker. I don't think Mark's here at the moment, is he? When he was 12 years old, the Greer Castle Preservation Trust was formed and years of painstaking work began on the grounds, restoration of the gardens and walkways and sourcing funding. This was a monumental task. The hard work paid off and in 2018, the castle and estate was finally purchased by the Greer Castle Preservation Trust. The reservation work which had been undertaken at the castle is a testament to the hard work and vision of Dr Mark Baker now. The team here at Greer, volunteers who give freely of their time, restoring paths, gardens and woodland walks in a sympathetic way as befits a grade one listed building, country house, especially a castle. Much work still needs to be done, and I have every confidence that the team will achieve this, but it will take many more years. Greer is once again set to be a Wales showcase, as visitor numbers have almost tripled since the lockdown, and I'm a celebrity. The work of the Castle Trust is vitally important going forward to sustain and protect its future for generations to come. I would personally like to thank Dr Mark Baker and his very busy, big team for the foresight shown in the restoration of Gwich. Diolch yn Mark, and I hope you <coughs> would join me in clapping the team and the volunteers. We mustn't forget why we are here this evening. 
and that is to welcome the absolutely beautiful poppy cascade here behind me. The memories each poppy holds to the individual makers is ultimate respect for the fallen and we remember past, as we remember past members of the community. And we are all have the hope that grief continues on its already strong foundations. Hope, remembrance and respect. My blessed young Imiduan Alu Arthur Hughes. Arthur Hughes, it's an absolute pleasure to call upon you here to sing to us tonight. Arthur attended school here in Emisapuan at Abagella as a young boy, and he was saddened also when Grieg was in a series of decline as he passed the castle daily. Arthur has sung in many venues throughout the country for charitable causes. Welcome, Arthur. He will be singing Well Shall Lana More, An Impossible Dream, and Some Enchanted Evening in this first half. Thank you. dream. Uh, this, is, this is for Team Grieg, for their inspirational determination, vision and unwavering optimism in doing what at times must feel like the impossible dream of restoring this magnificent building for the generations to come. Hats off to you. Oh, 
invincible dream to fight the unbeatable foe to bear with unbearable sorrow to run where the brave dead not go to right the unrightable wrong to love you and chase from afar to try when your arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star this is my quest to follow that star no matter how hopeless no matter how far to fight for the right without question or pause to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause and I know it will only be true to this glorious quest that my heart will lie peaceful and calm as I will lay to my rest and the world will be better for this that one man scorned and covered with scars still strove with his last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable star to her side 
you have found her, never let her go. Once you have found her, never random conversation myself and Beth had um, and this is how it evolved so I ended up being organising it all um, it's, it was hard work at first a lot of people got involved, friends and everybody passed the word on and managed to get a good team behind me who are here tonight and I will get on here before, before I finish because they need the recognition as well um, and it, it, last November, I don't know if you all saw it, we were on the Festival of Remembrance on BBC. Um, I've had to write this down. <laughs> now, this is just the start of what's going to be. Some of the poppies have gone to the schools for the children to do their own displays of whatever they want to do, which is nice. It's involving them, get, teaching them about remembrance and everything else. Um, so hopefully, you know, this is just the start and it will just get bigger and bigger for everyone. Um, it's to honour everybody in here must have someone who was fall, fallen in the war, First or Second World Wars, and it's just a lovely remembrance, you know, of love, remembrance, respect and hope for the future. We are... Oh, I, I need to mention... You probably, perhaps a lot of you know, that they had over 300 Jewish children here in the Holocaust that were brought here and they lived here for a while, a couple of years, um, which was nice for them, I suppose, to get out of the way. Um, so that's something else it's in conjunction with. Um, I want to thank everybody, everybody that's contributed, whether it big or small, whatever it is, Thank you so much because we wouldn't have been able to do this without you. Um, I've got to thank Mark Arowich and Tom King who have put this up for us. <laughs> We've had a great struggle this week. It was a building site on Tuesday so we've done very well to get it like this. Um, there's all the people that work in the background, the volunteers in the gardens, everybody. It was, uh, we have two ladies that can't be here with us tonight. One, I must mention, um, Elaine Towler lost her husband last week, so she would have loved to be here, but she's with us in spirit. Um, so it's been a sad time for us. And also our lovely Lisa, who was poorly a few months ago, still poorly now, but she's recovering slowly. Um, so I just wanted to remember those two, because they've worked hard as well. And also, the people who have collected the poppies, um, every little bit has helped. Tours at Tops, Pantry Back, um, Tracy at the gift shop. Just so many people have been involved and it's been just so lovely. Oh, can I have my team up here, please, now? Shirley, Jill, Al, Eli, Eileen, and Sue. So I just want a, a special thank you to these ladies because I wouldn't have done it without them. They've been my strength and my right. And Julie, come on up back, yeah. Come on, Julie, you're one of us as well. <laughs> <laughs> Julie has kept us fed and watered all the time. She's from the Betty Bond, so. <laughs> well, this is my lovely supportive team who I couldn't have done it without. They've been brilliant. <laughs> Now, I have a very special man here called Matthew. Is that right, Matthew? Yeah, yeah got it back. Okay. 
and he's going to do something for us. I don't know what it is, and I know he's going to get a bit of help from Tracer. So I'm going to hand the microphone over to Matthew. I'm going to say cheers for one last time. Enjoy your night, drink, eat, and be merry, and God bless all of you. Cheers. Cheers. Open. This lovely evening. I think we're a bit out of uh, context here. Um, lovely evening. I'm glad to see everybody just sharing it all together. Firstly, it's been a privilege to help make poppies for the Cascade. When we all started knitting, I think it was, um, was it July, Beryl? Right, there we are, they. I don't think anyone imagined it would look anything like this. It would involve so many people, reunite people, and make new friends. The knitting and assembling became very emotive to us all. And to see the cascade shown at the um, service of remembrance at our at the Royal Anvil Albert Hall uh, was wonderful. Thank you, Bev, for your inspiration to do this. To Beryl and the assemblers, all the knitters near and far, throughout our country and beyond, a truly wonderful achievement. Bev also asked if I would mention a few words about recent events at the castle. If you take your minds back to the summer of 2020, and due to the pandemic, Abigail had become a very different place to live. Instead of a bustling town, it had become very quiet, not much traffic, no visitors, no family gatherings, no events, tourist attractions had to close. At the end of August, following many rumours and much speculation, the news that everyone in the town had been waiting for, I'm a celebrity was confirmed as coming to Bria Castle. I was the serving mayor and had an extended term um, but Mayor of Abigail at the time, I immediately had a phone call from ITV asking if I would be interviewed and appear on Good Morning Britain the following morning. A wonderful experience and a chance to showcase what our castle, town and community is all about. I asked all the shops, offices, businesses in town to decorate their windows with the theme of the castle and the show. The response was immense. This is what everyone needed during the confines of the lockdown and at last, something positive to focus on. The castle was lit up during the evenings and looked stunning. The town looked wonderful, and several TV companies came along to have a look and film. Greer Castle was truly showcased. The programme had record ratings and watched throughout most of the world by millions. It's really put our castle on the map, and Abigail became known as Celebrity Town, Celebrity Town overnight. Even now, people make details through the town to pass the castle and families can still be seen filming. As we know, lockdown was with us for what seemed a long time. However, however, the restrictions are now lifted and things are becoming normal again. Our lovely castle has been able to allow and welcome visitors again since the end of March. Our wonderful golf club, Manor Avon Camping Site and Farm Park are all fully open again and busy. All wonderful attractions we are very fortunate to have and they all deserve the support we can give them after the last two difficult years. Visitors have always enjoyed coming to North Wales. The recent restoration of our castle along with being able to host such a popular show has helped to further increase tourism along the whole of the North Wales coast. Being an Abigail girl, I have grown up with Greer Castle nestling on the hillside overlooking our town. It's somewhere my family have always been proud of and visited. We've seen the demise of it over a few decades, but with the tremendous efforts of a young man, our Mark Baker, who's now with us, along with the support of his family in the Castle Trust, and not forgetting the very many volunteers, we are now seeing what can be achieved through sheer determination.
So well done, Mark. We will always be grateful that our castle has been saved for future uh, generations to enjoy. I'm glad to say Brea Castle is here now to stay. Along with the gardens, it's already looking wonderful, and the passage of time will re-emerge, and with the passage of time, will re-emerge to its former glory. And I can't imagine a more suitable setting for our wonderful poppy cascade. Um, as we've now, well, it's not quite true yet, is it? Um, I think we are going to pass over now to Mr. Arthur Hughes to um, entertain us again. But could I thank Bev, who, as you, we all know, she's an inspiration to us all. Beryl, the assemblers, not forgetting George and Carl this evening for their filming. Everybody that's been involved in this, it's such a tremendous effort by you all. Um, everybody involved, I think, has thoroughly enjoyed making this possible. So thank you all very close, uh, very, very much uh, indeed, and feel compelled if you need. Thank you. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, well, thank you very, very much coming tonight and I um, want to say thank you to everyone who has created what is a very amazing display and it's very heartening to see you all here and I just want to say thank you for all your support. Oh, someone's there. <laughs> all the phone's going on. Um, just want to say thank you very much for coming and thank you for all the support over the years and it's great to have you here inside the castle enjoying what we've been working on and this is all thanks to ITV as well this is one of their sets that we've kept you would have seen it on the show where they would have had the various different and um, they had like a pub in here with some of the challenges and um, they had one of my favorite ones was the mean massage where they had on the floor um, well they had a series of beds in the middle where the food is and then they're all having cockroaches dropped on them. They're not here now. So. <laughs> but those sorts of things stick in my mind. And um, you know, it's part of this evolving story of the castle. And we wanted to try and get people in here this summer. And we did have an issue with one of the beams we had to take down very suddenly. As the building's drying out, things do come apart. They've been exposed like 20, 30 years to the elements. And it's just, it's just great to be able to you know, look out the windows, see into the other rooms that we want to restore. And you look through that big opening into what was the music room and the drawing room. And each year we want to add more to the visitor experience. So thank you once again. And um, there's lots of food. I think there's still quite a bit of drink. So great. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. The visionary, as, we, as I said earlier. Um, to bring the evening to a close, but you know, there's more than plenty of food, Arthur's going to sing one song and we'll sing the two anthems. And please feel free to um, finish all the food and talk to each other, have a look around. And most of all, thank you all very, very much for coming. Um, it's been a great evening. Thank you. Dear Chavar Yanni Bell. So now I'm going to sing a prayer. It's called the Reverend Eli Jenkins Prayer. Um, and it's for the community of Abergele and Greek Castle. Every morning when I wake, dear Lord, a little prayer I make. Oh, please to keep thy loving eye on all poor creatures born to die. And every evening at sundown, I ask a blessing on this town. For whether we last the night 
it or no I'm sure it's always touch and go We are not holy, bad or good Who live our lives under milk wood And though I know we'll be the first To see our best side, not our worst Oh, let us see another day Bless us all this night, I pray. Unto the sun we all will bow and say goodbye, but just for now. Now we're going to finish off with a couple of anthems. We'll start with God Save the Queen. Please sing along. <laughs> <laughs> God save our gracious Queen, long live our noble Queen. God save our Queen. Send her victorious Happy and glorious, long to reign over us, God save our Queen. Thank you, Nelda Wilson, or something, which we have to start the right pitch, otherwise we won't be able to hit the top note. <laughs> I made that mistake before. So I've got an assistant here to help me. Starting with a C. Give us a C, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do that again, please. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs>